Mega booth at Gamescom and PAX West. Here from Team Crew to uh, <laughs> give you uh, the postmortem and the stalking victim of 2016, Sebastian Larsson. <laughs> Thank you. That was a magical introduction. Yeah. Uh, all right, everything is working. That is a good start. Uh, here it is. So, hi everyone. I hope you are feeling super good. Uh, it is very weird and very fun to be here. <laughs> My name is Sebastian Larsson. I am the game designer for Team Crew, which is this uh, this is us. It's a really small indie game studio based in Sweden and more specifically based well right here on campus because we work here. Uh, and we consist of a total of four members. Uh, and most of us are actually still studying our third year here in school. So you might have seen us like sneaking about in the F building and like working on stuff. So about two months ago we finally released our first game. It is called Frog Climbers. And for those of you who haven't seen the game and are not sure what it is, I'm going to hit you with this really, really short one minute trailer to introduce you. So, in short, you are a frog, you climb mountains, and you mess with your friends. So, after one and a half years of work, Frog Climbers uh, finally came out of Steam about two months ago, uh, during the 6th of October. So, one can play it, and download it, and have a really good old time. But, you know, how did we even pull this off, especially while still attending school? Uh, that is what I am here to answer. Uh, in this postmortem, I will talk about the journey our team went through, from prototype in a first year course to finished product this October. Uh, and my goal is to give you guys an idea of uh, the challenges that comes when dual wheeling sort of game development at school and school at the same time. Uh, and for that to happen, I'm gonna go back one and a half years in time to Theme Park, uh, where the first prototype of Frog Climbers was uh, developed. Uh, and this should be of interest to your first years, because you are attending Theme Park uh, at the end of your first year, come spring. Uh, and the gimmick of Theme Park, it is a production course, and the gimmick is to create games with unique inputs, so no controllers allowed and more arcade cabinets. Uh, and as a result, Frog Climbers was originally controlled using two joysticks, uh, with a button on each, each, uh, each joystick. So you would use your royal stick to control your arms and then press the button to grab. <laughs> Uh, so we got together, uh, there was five of us, and worked intensely on this weird climbing game idea. And at the time we didn't really have any further plans than let's make a game in the time we have and have a good old time. Uh, so after eight weeks of uh, intense development of prototype was done, we were super proud and we actually thought we had made something pretty neat here. And so did the judges at GDC. Uh, <laughs> That's Sammy, our programmer. He is amazing. Uh, we were awarded the best first year project as well as the Polish Award, which is apparently the best game in exhibition. Uh, we then submitted the game to the Swedish Game Awards, which is like the, it is the biggest game development competition in the Nordic countries, and it is specifically for students. Uh, and there we ended up winning the Gamers Choice Award as well as the best execution in design. And this is us uh, posing after the award in 2015. And you might not be able to tell, but Semi has actually been photoshopped in here. Because <laughs> uh, he was on vacation at the time. But due to the power of computers, we were able to get him anyway. So, so we were like, we have a game here, you know? 
if we have a game that people like, should we maybe continue developing it together? But there were obstacles. We were still attending school. Uh, would we have time? Should we like sh jump ship and leave school and make it during our free times? Or should we develop it while still attending school? Wouldn't we burn out if we did that? Spoilers, yes we would. Uh, how would we even release the game? Um, should we start a company? That sounds pretty scary to me, starting a company. How do you even do that? Uh, and how do we get in touch with like distributors? Do we need help with that? So to even start thinking about any of this, we held a meeting and established some overarching goals we were to work, to, uh, to work towards. First, no. Ah, first, create a worthwhile game. Uh, we wanted to finish it. Uh, what this means to us is that we wanted the game to feel like a complete package that one can sort of buy and feel happy about. Uh, so in short, make the game's feature set and level of polish match the market expectations. Secondly, we wanted to release said game on a platform so that a customer can view it and watch the trailer and download it and have a good time. Uh, so that could be Steam or consoles, we didn't really care, we just wanted it out there somewhere. Third, we wanted to get, to get uh, YouTubers to play Frog Climbers. Uh, we knew the game was a bunch of fun uh, to play and look at, so we figured if we could get the game to reach a bunch of people, we would be in a pretty good, great position, you know, as students. So as you can see, none of us are really looking to make any money in the first place. Uh, our goal was instead to re release a well-polished, valuable product and get YouTubers to play it. So we wanted to spread it. But how do we even do that? We figured to get on a platform, we probably need distributors uh, and some help with promotion. Um, but how do we reach them? Luckily, Campus Scotland arranges trips to GDC Europe and Gamescom each summer. And we decided to apply in order to get in touch with distributors and see if there is some sort of interest. Worst case scenario, we would get nothing. Best case scenario, we would get someone interested and we would get to decide uh, what to do with that interest. So we went to Germany. Uh, and it went surprisingly well. Uh, we pitched to a bunch of people and got a couple of distributors invested uh, who kept in uh, touch with us and we kept in touch with them. Uh, at the same time, uh, on top of this, Frog Clemens was nominated for the Sense of Wonder Night 2015. And I feel silly for saying this because Marcus already did all this, but whatever. Uh, so that was really cool. So we got to go to Tokyo and present the game at this weird conference. And on top, and you know, on top of this, it was nominated for Unity's Unite Award for Best Student Project. Uh, and we were not expecting this when like applying. Uh, you know, entry was free, so we we're like, oh, whatever, sure, why not? And then we got in, we're like, okay, whoa, whoa, take it easy. But it was really inspiring because, you know, we were not the only ones who thought the game was neat. It was like a good way to get confirmation. So we were like, no, we have a game. Uh, should we maybe continue development even while studying? Is that a thing? Uh, so we got together and we really was like, we have a game that we like. We have a game that an audience likes. We have a game that distributors, business people actually like and want to help get behind. We have a game which we can, no, <laughs> which we can develop for free in school, completely risk free during our free time. So there's like no investment and no loss of money. And we have a team and we like each other. We do not hate each other. That's a really good thing when making video games. So at this point, it seemed like a pretty bad idea not to continue the development of Frog Climbers. We could get, develop the game risk-free, people liked it, we had distributors and we worked well together. So finally, we decided to run with it, accept our call of adventure and begin the first proper batch of development uh, after uh, Theme Park. So first of all, we looked at the game and asked ourselves, what is missing from making Frog Climbers a complete game? <sighs> and we came to the following conclusion. We want to focus on what Frog Climbers already does well, the multiplayer experience. Uh, we want to make sure one can play the game uh, together for a good amount of time and come back to it again and again. In its current state, the game uh, worked very well, but it had a super small selection of levels only support for two players, there were no modifiers and like no different mountains. It was this, uh, no, they weren't even a menu, you know. Uh, it was this really super focused uh, experience designed to showcase the essence of Frog Climbers, but not much more than that. 
So our conclusion was the next step was to maybe add full play support. Ah, and more mountains to climb. And game modes that change the rules of play so you can mix things up. These were like vague goals, uh, but we wanted to get them in. But to do any of this in the first place, we would need a new menu system built for the future. Uh, because without better menus, players would not be able to join the game, game modes could not be selected nor communicated, mountain types could not be chosen. So the menu system would be like a foundation for all these features we wanted to get in. So we told ourselves, for this fall, we will implement full player support, uh, as well as implementing a menu system that can easily be added onto for more features. Uh, and it seemed pretty straightforward to us, you know? We had a plan and we had school and time to do it and everything was awesome. But, oh, this mouse, man. Oh, I have an idea. Yeah, that's good. But it wasn't easy. Uh, this batch of development going from September to January was the toughest part of developing Frog Climbers for us. Uh, and that's because doing school and game development is hard. Uh, I'm going to break it down for you. When studying 100%, you are expected to put in at least 40 hours a week, right? Uh, and of course, this shifts up and down uh, in different periods. But I think you can all sort of relate to putting it in a little bit more uh, when the going gets tough and a little bit less when the going is easy. Uh, imagine adding on to that the development of a game. You probably need to meet at least uh, two or three times each week with your team to like remember what you are doing half the time. Uh, plus, we found that work passes probably needs to be around four hours at least, or you won't be very effective. It'll just be like, hi, goodbye, and then it's over. So that means you will be spending another four times three, that's 12 extra hours of work per week in game development. So you're sinking eight hours per day into school, and then you get to push in another 10, uh, another 12. Where will you put them? Late, so maybe you can go like from. From quantity, no, to qu from quality to qu are constantly young. Uh, we did not have definite times in which we worked together. Instead, we had like We knew
was. And this was terrible. Burned out. But, you know. Uh, held a meeting to decide what prohibited. Why are, and most importantly, why are we even continuing development when it is so hard? Uh, why are we even trying? Uh, we were thinking about dropping the game completely. Uh, we were thinking about taking like a long year break from it and returning when we were less broken. <laughs> uh, but we didn't come up with any answers. Uh, instead, we went on a break, uh, on a holiday break for two weeks and relaxed. So that's two weeks of not thinking about anything and relaxing and it is exactly what we needed. So after Christmas, we had a meeting. And hey, it turns out we still have a game. And people still like the game, and we still like the game. And we still do not hate each other. That's really nice. Uh, but on top of all these really good things, uh, we still did had some restrictions. You know, Nobody really knows what's going to happen come fall. Some wanted to do other things than study. So it didn't sound feasible to continue development uh, post this, this uh, spring. And we couldn't really continue development after school either, because you know <laughs> that's several years in the future. We can't even think that far. That's ridiculous. Uh, uh, so those are some restrictions. And on top of this, you know, after putting all this work, all this time into the project, we didn't feel comfortable dropping it either. No way. So we came to the conclusion: we need to finish it with the time we have. So we decided to finish it before the next big production course, which is called a Big Game Project, which you uh, second years are attending soon. And you know that. I know you know that. Uh, because we knew we wouldn't have any time whatsoever during that course. So we saw very clearly we had 10 weeks to go before going gold. Uh, so with that in mind, we simply had to plan for a finished game within the time we had left. Uh, things we did not have time for, we simply let go. By using our time frame as a cutting block, we were able to create a final vision of what the finished product was. And there were no question marks, or at least not as many as before, which was nice. But most importantly, we finally got our schedule back. Uh, I'm going to say we probably worked more on frog climbers during this period than during fall, but due to our structure, it was manageable. So the new schedule set up very clear work times, pretty much forcing us to make school, frogs, and life fit within these very little boxes of time. So we scoped everything to fit within the time it was allotted. Group project would get less time, other courses would be less prioritized. I remember specifically dropping a course to have time for frogs and uh, picking up a less demanding course. Uh, there were no buffers, there were only frogs here. But since we had a clear vision of uh, what we're doing and why, and a clear path to get there, we actually managed. Uh, as our sprint ended, we had a new yeah, level generation system. Uh, that's this one. Uh, we had tripled the block count and created new block types like hard mountains and wind mountains. We had a new character. The mountain had gotten visual upgrades. Uh, we had modifiers that changed the rules of the game. There were even an option screen. <laughs> Amazing, I know. So then Big, big Game Project came. Uh, during this time, we worked very little on the game, mostly considering it to be finished, which was super nice. Uh, but we did, after months of putting it off, start a company and signed a distribution deal with our distributors uh, so that we would get some help getting on Steam and uh, promoting the game. Because promotion is important, you know? So Big Game Project ended. And as summer came into gear, we considered the game to be pretty much done, you know? But however, as the release was looming closer, we realized just how small our audience pool is. So I'm gonna do a little experiment with you guys. Uh, I would like all of you who plays local multiplayer games on Steam with your friends and actually buys them to raise your hand. Whoosh. 
Nice. That's one, two, three, four. That's a good portion of you. I want all of you who oh, who plays these games exclusively with Xbox 360 controllers and are prepared to do that to raise your hand. All right, cool. That's still like six people. <laughs> uh, but not a huge number. And keep in mind, you guys are also a concentration of people invested in video games. Mm -hmm. On an island where most of the people who you work with and spend all your time with play video games, you should be playing party games because that's the best thing you can do on this island. So clearly, <laughs> we saw that we were aiming for a very small niche uh, that we were not even sure like existed and could like support people. And while Frog Climbers was not designed with an audience type, from the get-go, you know, we were just making video games. Uh, so come summer, we realized that the number of people who play local party, blah, we realized that the number of people who play local party multiplayer games uh, and have controllers to play them with is pretty small. So with multiplayer at a satisfying state, we asked ourselves, how can we widen our audience a bit with only a couple of months until release? So one solution was to add controller more support for a uh, wider array of controllers. Keyboard support was uh, out of question because it didn't feel good, play, good to play, but we added the uh, support for PS4 controllers and Logitech and everything, what have you. Uh, that way the party niche uh, could at least play with whatever controllers they preferred, which was nice. But what about all the single players? Mm. What if your friends has come home and you still have a climbing edge? What if you played Frog Climbers at a friend's house, had a great time, but only play single-player games? For these situations, we decided to incorporate a single-player mode, but we didn't really have a lot of time. We had no time to do any like uh, handmade content, so no real story mode could be done, no AI at all. <laughs> uh, uh, so there, there were some restrictions, but we did have a level generation system. We had a satisfying core mechanic, and we figured one can always climb faster, right? So maybe the only thing missing is an incentive to do so. And thus, we came up with daily speed climbs. A mountain generation system would generate mountains based on the date. Each day there's a new mountain. And then you just speed run it. In terms of work, it was mostly a matter of figuring out how to save player times on a Steam leaderboard, and then create an UI for that. Luckily, semi programmer is good at what he does. <laughs> and we finished before the summer was over. So we had pretty much finished the game towards the end of summer. Uh, but as release was looming closer, we stepped up our promotional game to build hype leading up to release. So far, we had mostly been living in the production cave, focusing on trying to get the game done uh, rather than in trying to get it known. So in regards to that, one day our distributor was like, hey, you should probably go to Gamescom and PAX and exhibit the game. Would you like to do that? Because you can. And we were like, yeah, maybe we should do that. And so we did. Uh, we first stood in a booth in Germany for a week straight. Then me and Sammy burned about uh, 10k each and went to PAX in Seattle, where we stood in a booth and showed the game off for another three days. So we did a whole showcasing tour. And overall, people had a ton of fun. It was invigorating to get this great feedback after working in, in game development cave for so long. People were hyped and excited about it, which was cool. And apart from this, uh, during the final months leading up to release, we focused on making sure the game ran smoothly, we polished UI elements and created promotional material, like uh, the trailer you saw in the beginning of the talk, and other things. So, it had been over a year. The frogs had grown up to become a part of our daily lives, ever present in the background. And we were finishing it! On the 6th of October, Frog Climbers was released on Steam for all to enjoy. We had a party in the F building. Thank you to everyone who came. Uh, by the way, <laughs> appreciate it. So it was out. Uh, I've told you this very long and specific tale of the production of Frog Climbers. And we've worked for very hard for a very long period of time. And we finished a thing. And that's cool. But how did it really go? What was the reception like? I know you all want to know. So let's take a look. In terms of reception, we, the game has been received mostly uh, nicely. People. Uh, there are some, these are some reviews I grabbed from the Steam App Store, and it, I think, Steam App Store, Steam page. Uh, and I think the game has around uh, 8 out of 10 rating on Steam. Uh, people are mostly concerned with the lack of online multiplayer, which we know is a big issue, but we can't really do anything about that. But apart from that, they're having an excellent time, which is really cool to see. 
And then there's YouTubers. Frog Climbers has been covered extensively by a number of different YouTubers, generating hundreds and thousands of views. And that's really nice. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> but that's not all. Uh, so that's cool, no, but in addition to that, we are featured in the latest Humble Bundle. Whoa! Uh, and the bundle, as of yesterday, has over 35,000 couples sold. That's cool. So technically, over 35,000 people own frog climbers. Uh, so we got a great project. We have gone to a bunch of shows to get the game out there and got an excellent feedback. We have a distributor who helps us with promotion. We have a ton of YouTubers promoting said product for free. We are even in a humble bundle. So given this great reception, we are obviously pretty wealthy now, right? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. First of all, the humble bundle thing for is for charity. So while it's super good to contribute, uh, we are not getting uh, any uh, financial things out of it. Apart from that, the sales have been pretty bad. Uh, in fact, our distributor is still recouping the amount they're spent on promotion for frog climbers. So the income from frog climbers has not reached this threshold yet, meaning we have gotten nothing. And again, this is no fault of our distributor. Uh, it is simply a result of the bad sales. So one can attribute this to a lot of different things. We're a local party game on Steam. We offer no keyboard and no mouse support. Uh, we are launching a game in a flooded market, etc. But I want to make that clear. <laughs> We have spent a year and a half of this game and done our very best and got nothing out of it financially. So uh, from a business perspective, I guess that is a pretty terrible thing, you know? But we're students. Let's look at our goals rather than an entrepreneur's dreams. We wanted to finish a game. We wanted to release it on a platform. We wanted to get YouTubers to play it. So from our perspective, we had succeeded. <laughs> uh, I think we did the best of the situation. We took what we had, we ran with it, and we finished it to our, the best of our abilities and limits. Uh, we never took any risks, and in the end, they released a polished, fleshed out experience. So that's pretty cool. But that's the journey. It's time for a sick of water. Mm. Ah, water. So yeah. I thought uh, really illustrating the struggle of dual wielding school and game development would be beneficial for you guys. Uh, it has been a long journey filled with hard work, long days and tough decisions. But at the same time, as it turns out, making video games is pretty fun, you guys. You know, designing new levels and mountains, it's pretty fun. Play testing and finally getting uh, your tutorial right so that people get it is pretty fun. Seeing your game become pro progressively more beautiful as your graphic artists work hard, it's, it's pretty fun. But So if you think it's fun, then you should definitely do it. Uh, I would say do it because you want to, not for an external reward. But keep in mind, that is just like from my very narrow point of view, I have experienced nothing in the world yet. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> so that's all I got. Thank you so much for listening. I wanted to go out there and make video games. Whoa. <laughs> now uh, maybe take questions. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. These are us. No, it doesn't work. Okay. You can repeat the question in the mic. Yes. Uh, how much is it uh, in Steam? Oh, you mean to pay? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I should know this by heart. I think it's about uh, 7 euro? 699. <laughs> uh, yeah, what's your next uh, project? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Our next project is sleeping. So when you designed this game, uh, you, you just did it as a, uh, what was it, second year project? No, first year first project. project. Did, how did you reason when you came up with this idea as it was, became so popular? Did you actually aim for anything in particular or did you just like wing it? Or? <laughs> I think a mixture of both. 
uh, original design goals were to create a really uh, accessible experience, uh, a arcade machine experience that you could just like walk up to and have fun with a friend. So in a way, we designed it specifically for GGC. Uh, so that was our original goal, like make a really great arcade GGC game and do it the best we can. Uh, but then it just snowballed and it turned out that you can play it outside of GGC as well. Does that answer your question? Oh shit, I didn't repeat it. Ah. Uh, the first question was, <laughs> how much is Frog Climbers on Steam? <laughs> and it is 6.99 euros. And the second question was, uh, did we have any, uh, what was our goals when designing the the theme park experience? Was it like intentional to make it fly? Was that a question? Well, it's somewhat basic, but it was more about like, um, when you wanted to design this game, did you, uh, did you plan for it to be like uh, very, very specific about this climbing game? Did you like um, mm -hmm. uh, scope it for like, this is our vision and you made it in two just frog climbers or was it more like, uh, okay, I'm really gonna make a game about Climbing, and that's it. Mm. Uh, so the question was, if we were scoping for a finished version, we're making a prototype, or if it was just more like a wing it climbing. Uh, we scoped, our idea was to make frogs and climbing a multiplayer originally, and then we just sort of iterated based on what worked. But pretty early, we like we found what worked, and that it was multiplayer, you can grab each other and pull each other down. So like we pretty early found like what our, I'm gonna go back to this, what our thing was. Um, and just like added polish and iterated from there. So we had a pretty, we had a good vision of what the prototype was initially. More questions? Why frogs? Uh, that's a very easy question actually. Uh, we knew we didn't want to make humans because humans are complicated and boring. Uh, so we needed an animal and we needed an animal with arms and legs because you need to grab them obviously. And we're like, okay, what are some funny animals that we can take? Well, monkeys are pretty boring. What about frogs? And then it became frogs. Oh, the question was, why frogs? <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, take care. <laughs>